President Donald Trump, the President of the United States of America, might lose his place as President because the U.S. House of Representatives, the Congress, has impeached him in a near-party line vote yesterday. He's still the President. Don't be alarmed. <laughs> now, Donald Trump has been accused of abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. I wonder, are there any lessons that our Nigerian leaders can learn from the current ordeal of the U.S. President? Well, joining me to have this conversation, Biodo Shomi, a legal, uh, he's a political analyst, I beg your pardon, and of course, Obi Ajewa is a legal practitioner. Thank you, lady and gentlemen. Uh, you guys seem to always be together every other day. Well, <laughs> lucky coincidence. Well, maybe we are, we are lucky. A deliberate coincidence. Deliberate. <laughs> deliberate. So I'm going to start with you, Biodo. Um, okay. Donald Trump is, from the onset, uh, he won Hillary during, before the elections, during the campaigns. You know, he gave everybody a name. Um, he said, uh, he gave Hillary Clinton a name. You know, he was very outspoken in not the nicest ways. And he didn't win the hearts of the Democrats, of course. And there were so many other things that came after. Uh, the alleged allegation of Russian interference in the elections, and then the Ukrainian uh, president who they overheard, according to the reports, uh, Donald Trump trying to get him to investigate his opponent in the 2020 elections, former President Joe Biden. So it's a potpourri of issues for, for Donald Trump. He's not had the easiest presidency. And here we are today, the third president in the history of the United States to be impeached, but it doesn't end there, does it? No, it may not lead to removal, and I think it will not lead to removal, given the fact that it has taken, um, the, 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 the decision has actually polarized the party along, the parties along party lines. Mm -hmm. You have the Republicans already saying, particularly the majority leader of the Republican party saying, look, in the Senate we have to control the majority, we are gonna have, to, we will not remove the president. What they're saying basically is to settle for the same um, American culture of settlement because mm. it's the third one that will see the same pattern mm. um, where a president will be impeached by the House of Representatives and the Senate will refuse to remove him. More or less, not clearing the person but not suffering the punishment. So mm. it will only remain an indictment. And it always, when you look at it, is the only, Donald Trump is the first American president out of the three that will get impeached in the first time. The other two were impeached in the in second, the second term. Yeah. So the problem here is, it is not only about um, Trump, it's about the fate of the Republican Party itself. Because when you look at the fact that the Democrats have started their primaries all along for over a year now, just in a, giving room for this kind of alleged interference or which he has been found guilty of, what you notice is that if the Republicans agree to remove Trump today, when they're running into election next year, in some months' time, then they will be in serious trouble. When are they going to select a candidate up to the point of selling that candidate to Americans? So because of that consideration, they are most unlikely going to uh, remove him from office. They would rather have him hang on and then wait for the electorate uh, to make a decision. The other case, which is somehow comparable, before we draw out the lessons, is the case of Richard Nixon. Mm -hmm. When Nixon was about to be impeached, Nixon decided to resign. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, his, uh, the support for him plummeted, so he resigned. When he resigned, he decided to contest the next election, and then he won with um, resounding victory, because Americans recognized that he had realized he had. He did not waste the time of the House of Representatives, he did not waste the time of Americans, and eventually they rewarded him by saying, okay, we know you have learned from what happened, now go back, and he came back. Now, when you now take it into consideration, there are two angles or two lessons to learn. One is for the electorates, and the other, you know, it's for our political leaders. On the part of the electorate, if you watch the whole debate, you will notice that most of the time, many of the more elderly um, Democrats were actually linking their action to history and what America should be, what it represented, the dreams of their for, for, uh, founding fathers, where the law will not be a respecter of anyone. Mm -hmm. And that broadly was their position. Mm -hmm. And on account of that, they convicted him, which is something lacking in our politicians. Again, when you look at opinion poll, prior to that impeachment, again, it was following the same pattern. People who GOP spoke to and other 
polling agencies, you know, were actually mirroring what the Democrats were saying to say that, look, well, Trump did something bad. Mm -hmm. we, we are not going to condone it. The law is no respecter of anybody. And the president is not above the law that the America is made and guided by law, not by men. Mm -hmm. So that is a lesson even for Nigerians, you know, to uh, pick something from. On the part of the political leaders, you can see the robust debates, you know, that went on, even when people disagree vehemently, even when I disagree with pe people's viewpoints, you can see the logicality of their reasoning. You know, there's a logic to everything the they're factual saying. factual analysis and factual reasons. Like, backed, backed with reasons, you know. You don't have to agree with it. You can disagree with their minor premise or major premise. That is not the issue. But what you see at the end of the day is that their debates are well informed. Uh, it's not stomach infrastructure, infrastructure <laughs> minded. You know, it's not about your position, mm -hmm. but it's also about America. And they all kept emphasizing America, America, America. So, I mean, that's a lesson in patriotic leadership, the kind of leadership which this country, you know, deserves. We are, okay. Even the president can be grilled, can be examined, can be probed, you know, can be investigated. Uh, we will come back to that. Let's put a plug there. Now, I want to point out just one of the uh, um, ones I watched, um, a young Republican who while he was making a presentation, he voted against Trump, I must say. Mm -hmm. And in his speech, he, was, he referenced his two children, and he said to them that he was not doing this because of the party. He said he was doing this because he wanted, sometime in the future, when his children would see this, they would realize that he was doing it for the future of America because the, what Donald Trump was representing was not necessarily you know, what they want for the future of America. Now, let's not even talk about what he said. Let's look at the fact that a Republican was voting against a Republican president. This is something, Obi, that can never, ever happen in Nigeria, except that Republican is about to cross over. And he would cross over first before ever doing that, because we know how party loyalty is mm. in Nigeria, and it's mostly selfish. It is. It's not only selfish. It's it's um, it's embarrassing. Um, the issue of our party policy. Somebody was asking me, can they ever impeach uh, President Buhari? I said it has to be something that touches everybody on an individual basis. Not and when we say everybody here, we're talking about the politicians because yeah, you know no, the touches, impeachment has to happen in the Senate, yeah, not on Twitter. No, no. It, it, uh, the, I'm talking about the House of Assembly. It must be something that touches them on a personal basis that they will say to hell with um, party cleavages. Let's vote according to our interest. And that thing is far away. Can there to come. ever be a time? I, because I wonder. My mind really wonders. There was, can there ever be a time where? We can all unite and agree on a thing. I mean, even when all of us, the electorate, uh, uh, you know, decide that, oh, this is wrong, the politicians always have a way of running around each other. Yeah, but you know why? There was a time... We don't have Nigerian values. Do we have common values? There was a time, remember when Mr. President traveled somewhere and said, if you mm -hmm. want to come to Nigeria, you should come. You get visa at the port. No, to uh, Egypt. Yes. He was in Egypt. He was in Egypt. He said they, sh they should come to the port. I was, I was really, I was quite happy when I read that the Senate said no. And people that were telling me about it, they said, oh, people will start. I said, no, it's not like that. It's, he can go and say it, but it has to be passed into law. It must pass through due processes. And the Senate knows the implication of that for but them. But does the president not have veto powers? No, no, no. I don't think the issue of immigration uh, visa control needs to go through. Uh, Due the process in the National Assembly, yeah. assembly no, because no. I think he could be, be vetoed. Be, yeah, because that's an executive decision. You know, about how you regulate how people obtain but your visa, it, it whether is, it's obtained at the port of it entry, is, it is obtained not, on the internet, obtained in any it other It is means. not yeah. it is not something he will go and talk and it will come into law immediately. No, people should understand what the president tried said. I am not defending the presidency in any form. What the president like said, it. just interpreted <laughs> what the president said in Egypt is that people can travel to Nigeria, you know, without obtaining visa prior to approval, to arrival. That is, when you get to port, port of entry, you still pay what you need to pay, and then you'll be granted the visa. 
what that did is to eliminate the bureaucracy, you know, the idea that you have to first go to the embassy, go and obtain visa first before... Close. It does not mean that people will come into the country uh, uncontrolled. That's not what it means. Mm -hmm. The other aspect of it is we should not also forget one thing, that there are also requirements under the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, which Nigeria has signed, which is coming into effect next year. Mm. And it will affect all countries. And it has something to do with liberalization of movement of workers, you know, capital and all that. So there, are, there could be reasons which we have not been told in detail. Uh, but I don't necessarily think that the president needs to go to the uh, Senate or the Senate can stop or moderate the way visas are issued or how the borders are controlled um, uh, specifically, I don't think the Senate can do that. What the law can do is to bring out a general policy or enact a law and, subject and, to interpretation. And where, where, is the, that, um, where will that policy come from? No, it's there already. Look, the no, law says would, immigration where department. Would, you said they don't need the Senate. Yes. Where, would, where would the executive order and everything emanate from? Yeah, from the presidency. Mm -hmm. Because the you already have the, the law. The Attorney General of the Federation. We already have the law. No, not even the Attorney General. Mm. It's just on the President agrees or the Cabinet. Mm. It's just for the Minister of um, Interior in okay. charge of uh, immigration and the external affairs. Let's come back to modality. let's come back to America. We're talking about America yeah. again versus Nigeria. We try to emulate what we have is trying to mirror the kind of democracy that happens in the U.S. But, like a uh, former presidential aide said, we have a Nigerian way of doing things, even our democracies, a Nigerian kind of democracy. Yes, <laughs> How do we get to a point where we can bring our leaders to accountability in this? Because every time I listen to a U.S., as some, someone as low as a councilman, a council, that's what they call their chairman, local government chairman, so council, a county council, council, Council member, council, council, councilwoman or councilman, mm -hmm. they always talk about their constituents. You talk about the guys in the UK, the parliament, uh, the P uh, pri uh, p parliament members, the PMs um, would always say, or the MPs rather would say, I cannot sign this because I cannot go back to my people with this. So I have never heard any argument on the floor of the National Assembly where they say, well, my constituents said or my constituents would not agree to this. Never. So when do we, I mean, we go, they go to these places, they, they have meetings with these people. When are we going to be prioritized as we see from the people who we were supposedly learning from? When are we going to be prioritized the way they prioritize their, their constituents? Before I come to answer this question, there's, a, there's a something I want to draw out. And I would like to throw a question to him if, I, if it's possible. Yeah, I ask please. the questions, though, Sorry. but it's okay. <laughs> um, looking at all this impeachment thing, what purpose has, has it served? The whole purpose was to get Donald Trump out. What purpose has it served? No, the purpose of impeachment, Yarin, is not to remove the president. The purpose is to investigate whether you have committed any error mm -hmm. that can lead to your being trial. And now he has been indicted. Once he's been indicted, there has to be a trial in the Senate. The Senate can choose, under the American law, not to conduct that trial and do what they call an open mm -hmm. debate mm -hmm. and then just straight away vote on it. And they can choose to refer it to their own uh, judicial arm, the yes, investigative arm, to now actually try mm -hmm. do, do that Trump. What we've seen currently is that I am not pleased that Donald Trump himself did not even appear before the House of Reps. It shows a total lack of respect for that very process. And, 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 this, is, and this is the reason why these impeachments have gone on and on. on. Precisely. But what you see is that impeachment is an indictment. You have been indicted for this quite often. I don't know whether Trump will be an exception. If you notice when Clinton was indicted. The problem is this, it affected Hillary when Hillary contested against Bush. Okay. It affected Hillary so much in a way that Hillary actually lost the election. Not outrightly, you know, she got but, the majority but, but of the But it was influenced by, one way yeah, or the other. One way or the other. Now, in the case of Trump... In closing, the, because we need to go. Yeah, because he's the first president who, is, who has been impeached in his first term, we need to see whether it will affect the result of the election 
coming up. If it does affect the election, result of the election, then that the impeachment will have served. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, well I, I want to thank you, Obia Jagwa, and be able to show me for being here. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Uh, thank you very much for being here. Yeah, we need to go. We'll take a short break and bring you a plus report, and then we'll be wrapping up the show. Stay with us. The House of Representatives has rejected a tenor allegation bill which prescribes six years for Nigeria's presidents, state governors, and members of the National Assembly. The bill, which was sponsored by John Diag from Benue State, aims to amend the nation's constitution in order to cure ambiguities noticeable in the four year single tenor and provide enough time for elected officials to impact on the electorate. Lawmakers have, however, unanimously voted against the bill, saying the four year single term system is practicable. If you go to other clients, your excellency, honorable colleagues, like the US, you see somebody in a particular committee staying 25 years, you see he has a bundle of knowledge in that committee. Now what we want to do is if we are turning the high turnover every four years is over 200, almost two thirds, the implication is that we are losing so much experience. We are therefore proposing that we should have a six-year tenure for legislators so that even if you are living after one tenure, you know that you have enough experience for the institution. I believe this house should concentrate more on strengthening the electoral reforms. And I'm aware that we, as the Ninth Assembly, are very focused on strengthening our electoral laws and making sure we pass electoral reforms that will let the citizens pick the right leaders that would work for their own benefit. Somebody can just come in and own work. That's where the parties need to select good hands. And if you also have a governor that will not work, it will mean that the party will lose their state. So, Mr. Speaker, I support this bill. We shall like scale through second reading and it will save this country, to save our democracy. If you find a leadership that is unpopular, and we have to wait for six years to change that, that particular uh, administration, that will be too difficult, and that will be too dangerous for us. And if the man in his own way, Nigeria way, is able to manipulate another six years, uh, next time another person takes over, and it's six years, then we are really in trouble. As much as possible to save the situation, and uh, as a president officer, at this stage, I cannot allow the opportunity because we are going beyond that. The question now is that those in favor of the bill be ready a second time, say aye. aye. Those against say nay. Then they serve it. Well, we're looking forward to when our National Assembly will be having us in mind half the time. Every time they make an argument, they should be having us, the people, at the back of their minds. And... I'm looking forward to when they would also come home to us and be accountable to us and say, these are the decisions that have been taken on the floor. What do you, my people, think? Well, my name is Mary Anacom. It's been Plus Politics. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.